Well, welcome to this final day of 20 days on following Jesus. Of course, we know that you don't finish following Jesus in 20 days. It's a lifelong pursuit. And I want to encourage you, uh, as in my life and probably yours, the most profound things in our lives are things that we return to again and again, not something we just do once and move on from. And so over these last 20 days, if there are certain things that God has spoken to you or you want to return to and think more deeply about, pray more about, you can go back, return again and again to what it means to follow Jesus. In fact, we've provided more resources so you can delve deeper into those things you believe and feel God wants to lead you into. But today, in our final day, I want to talk to you about um, a principle from Jesus that is really foundational and informs all the other things we've been talking about over these last 20 days. And it comes to us in really two words I want to talk about, submission and surrender. I'm going to guess that maybe your reaction to submission and surrender is not always positive. When I think of the word surrender, I think of this painting my father-in-law used to have in his office of General Lee surrendering his sword to General Grant at the end of the Civil War at the Appomattox Courthouse. Because that's what the losing general does. He's been conquered. He surrenders. Or submission. Maybe you think of, well, that's what a dog does at obedience school, submits to his master. We don't associate positive things with those words, submission and surrender. But when it comes to following Jesus, those two words are crucial to us if we're going to really follow Jesus. Listen to how Jesus puts this in Luke chapter 9, verses 23 through 25. And he said to all, If anyone would follow me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. For what does it profit a person to gain the whole world, yet forfeit his very soul? These are deep and profound words from Jesus. He's telling us that following him means surrendering yourself. It means two things. Taking up your cross, that is submission, and denying yourself, surrender. The surrender of the self in order to submit to and follow Jesus are crucial things for us to understand. Because really, you cannot follow yourself and Jesus at the same time. You're either denying him and following yourself, or you're denying yourself and following him. That sounds harsh, I know. Maybe you're thinking, hey, hey, I'm neutral in this whole thing. But actually think about it. The world is constantly telling you, trust yourself, love yourself, accept yourself, justify yourself. And Jesus comes on the scene and says, actually, deny yourself. They both can't be equally true. Now, this is not like denying yourself chocolate uh, or something like that, but it means to deny your self, that part of you and me that wants to call the shots in our life, that wants to be in control, that wants to determine what's right and wrong for me with no outside interference. That's the part of ourselves we have to surrender to Christ. Um, to surrender that part of you that, that wants to be in control means to let Christ be in control of your life. The world is saying the best way for you to live a fully fulfilled life is to place yourself and your desires at the center. And Jesus says, actually, no. The opposite is true. The best and only way for you to live a truly fulfilled life is not to put yourself at the center, but to put Jesus at the center. So the choice is really quite simple. We're either going to live a self-centered life or a Christ-centered life. That's the choice of following Jesus. And what about this part about taking up your cross when Jesus says this? What's he talking about? You know, in the first century, Romans would compel condemned criminals to carry the horizontal crossbeam of their own execution to the, to the cross where they would be put to death. Nobody willingly picked up a cross. You were made to do it under pain of death. So I can imagine the first century hearers when Jesus said this, their jaws dropping, being shocked. Like, who would choose to pick up a cross? But this is precisely what Jesus does for us. He willingly takes up his cross for us and for our salvation. Hebrews chapter 12 puts it this way. He endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God for us. And notice also Jesus says, take up your cross daily. That's interesting. Because who gets crucified daily? Once is usually enough. It doesn't, you take up your cross, you're going to die. His point is this. He died for us. He calls us to die to ourselves for him. And that is a daily, moment-by-moment -moment thing. To lay down my need to control my own life and surrender again in submission to his control 
over my life. That's what he's talking about. And this is not easy. It's a struggle. But you know it was also a struggle for Jesus? In the Garden of Gethsemane, you might remember his prayer. Lord, if there's any other way, let this cup pass. Yet, not my will, but your will be done. That's a prayer of submission and surrender. Here's how A.W. Tozer puts it in his book, The Radical Cross. He says, in every Christian's heart, there is a cross and a throne. And we are on the throne until we put ourselves on the cross. To refuse the cross is to remain on the throne. We want Christ, but we insist that he do all the dying. No cross for us, no dethronement, no dying. We remain king within the little, within the little kingdom of our own souls, wearing our tinsel crown with all the pride of Caesar. But we doom ourselves to shadows, weakness, and spiritual sterility. Whoa. But here's the beautiful irony. When we die to ourselves, when we surrender to Christ, we don't lose, we gain. Remember what Jesus said? He says, what does it profit you to gain the whole world yet forfeit your soul? And the one who loses his life for his sake will save it. The world is telling you the only way to live a fulfilled life is to put yourself at the center. Jesus is saying the only way to live a life of true fulfillment and joy is to die to yourself and put him at the center, to let him be on the throne because he went to the cross for you. Okay, but how? How do we actually practice submission and surrender? What does it look like? Let me give you two things you can do, today and every day. Number one, speak the truth of surrender into and over your life. My favorite passage to do this comes from Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, where the Apostle Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So today and every day, speak that truth over your life. Here's the second thing you can do. Pray the prayer of surrender. If you're a journaler, get out a piece of paper or open your journal and write these words. Lord Jesus, today I surrender what? I surrender my need to control. I surrender my fear of the future. I surrender my worry over the past. I surrender this relationship that I'm struggling with. Whatever it is, it might be the same thing every day. You have to surrender all over again. Maybe it'll be different each day. But speak the truth of surrender from God's word and pray the prayer of surrender. Do that today and do it each day as we seek to follow Jesus together.